We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on Kendall Fuller, Miami Dolphins' newest corner. And honestly, I think this is the best pick, free agent pickup they've had yet. Um, reasons for that being, he's my favorite player I've watched on film. I think his film's really, really good. Like, his ability in zone and, like, off-man corner is super impressive. His route recognition, his eyes, when he can play with great vision, he sees the field super, super well. And another reason, I think, you know, players like Brooks or Brewer being younger could have, like, longer-lasting impacts and, you know, they have longer contracts. Um, but I think when you look at it, how much they're making like per year, Fuller making like 8.25 per year, I believe. Um, he's a premium position player. He's quite good and you get him for that contract. It's super, super good at the corner position. He's a huge, uh, like much, much cheaper than Xavier Howard would be. Plus I think he's an upgrade to Xavier Howard. And I don't know if it's like that close either. Like he's played much better than Howard has the past three years. And uh, I just really enjoy watching him play. Another reason is his, I think the versatility he's about to add to this defense. I think, you know, Weaver really wants to, you know, use guys in multiple different spots. And Fuller was a top tier slot corner, nickel corner for his first few years in the NFL. And has transitioned to be more of an outside guy, which he does at a very high level too. And I just think, you know, whether you want to play him outside in the slot, it just allows you to move uh, Ramsey around and playing him in multiple different spots, which I think the defense really wants to get going. Plus, I think with that, both of these guys playing able to play inside and outside the third corner spot is open up to anyone i think it could be cam smith or Kater kohu really fighting for that spot um it could end up being more of an outside spot or an inside spot i think depending on the game but yeah fuller really impressive he makes a lot of plays on the ball great ball skills right here you know he's a flat corner down in the red zone he's like opening it up a uh, zone turning here initially and they're trying to throw a fade he's eyeing you know the number two Seeing what's going to happen here because he's got the flat responsibility of number two is going to work out into him and then one works across he's going to pass it off but he recognizes that doesn't happen so he gets hands on to slow garrett wilson they're trying to throw a fade he turns back into him basically turns into man to man and then now goes up times it up perfectly fights down through he had like three pass breakups in this game definitely the best corner uh, on the field for washington uh, with a really bad defense but he just continually continuously makes plays on the film and i just you know he was definitely the best free agent corner still available and I really really like the signing I think he's uh, the best player they've gotten so far and you know I'll get to the rest of the signing still every single day I'm gonna be dropping one probably Jordan Poyer next can I get to every person they've signed even as they have film obviously um even the lower tier guys just to see if I think they can make an impact uh credit to Chris Greer and just the whole front office I think they've done a really good job I think it's the most impressed I've been with the front office considering the resources I think this is the best period they've had I think I might do a my first live stream next week, probably on Monday, just talking about all free agency and even doing some draft stuff. So uh, really excited with what they've been able to do, bringing in just quality signings. Um, I haven't loved every player they've signed, as you'll see when I get to certain videos, like Neville Gallimore doesn't really do much for me, but they signed a lot of D tackles. But yeah, Kendall Fuller, really, really big fan. The way you know the NFL works nowadays, you got to be able to do everything as a corner in the past game. You got to be able to play man zone and zone match where like, Right here, you know, Washington's playing cover six, but they're basically pattern ma pattern matching. So he's pretty much responsible for number one in most situations. And it's Garrett Wilson. Again, he just does a great job squeezing because he's, you know, technically this flat defender, but he squeezes number one, presses up into him for long enough to now he's going to match this get downhill. Uh, it doesn't allow for him to create a ton of separation. He stays square, gets hands on, gets his eyes, then plays through, then uses a nice hook and swat technique to knock that ball out. Uh, in a second and 10 situation, he just makes a solid play. Very, very consistent in coverage. And honestly, he, he did a really, really good job for Scott Wilson, which is a good sign because they'll have to cover him twice a year now uh, for the Dolphins. And yeah, just really big fan of his instincts. And I think really the only situation, I just didn't really see him play press man-to-man, -man, which is fine. Like you don't have to have him playing press. You can have him playing a few yards off because he's just better when he has vision. And you'll see when he's playing some off-man stuff and he can make some breaks. And then zone, he really understands stuff like squeezing guys, but also passing them off and then finding the other receiver to take away, you know, that grass. He just does a great job with his leverage. Washington, running quarters down within the red zone. Uh, I think the, the Dolphins' new defense, especially if they're taking, you know, from the McDon McDonald tree from the Ravens with what Weaver's going to do, they're going to be running all different types of coverages. But definitely seeing like things like quarters cover six, which and you know where he's playing like a flat or a quarters look, that will happen quite a bit, which uh, we've already seen a couple times now. 
And this is Garrett Wilson trying to hit him with a hard, you know, double move, get like a blaze out going. This can be tough to cover. And like, look at all this space there is to work with. Like he's basically isolated. This is actually kind of similar to like when Diggs uh, smoked Kohu in that one touchdown down in a similar situation. But Fuller just does a great job um, staying patient. He's mashing this. He's staying square, ready to break on this. He doesn't gain too much depth to where he can just give up the free touchdown on like a end breaker and he's ready to break on it, get on that. And then boom, Garrett Wilson is trying to hard break to the outside. He's got great change of direction skills, Garrett Wilson. So he's able to just stay patient, stay square, get hands on him to slow him down, but without, you know, uh, getting an obvious penalty and just sticks in that hip pocket and he doesn't even end up getting the ball out to Garrett Wilson. That's just great work by Kendall Fuller when isolated on an island like that versus Garrett Wilson to not allow any separation. This guy is really, really good playing in like the zone or off man slash, you know, match situations where you can play top down. He's very, very impressive. Just want to show this clip, even though nothing too crazy happens, just to show like what type of player he is because it happens all the time on his film. He just never got a target out of it. But basically, Washington's playing quarters here, and he plays in this look where he can, you know, either bail out of it and be a quarters corner because they're playing, you know, split field safety looks, too high look, or he can sit down and, you know, cloud and play as a flat corner. So he does a good job with helping with disguises and understands that. And, you know, even though this ball just quickly goes to the other side of the field, he does this a lot, and I just didn't get to see it get targeted in all the games that I've watched. But he instantly, you know, makes a call, points that this guy's going to be down the flat, and this guy should go to the flat here. This guy doesn't end up doing it because the ball is going out to the other side of the field. But then he gets over the top and then squeezes number two working down the seam. Uh, it's just something that you got to be able to do when you're playing these zone coverages to communicate and then get over and, you know, squeeze, you know, not just cover grass and stay in your, you know, one fourth, get over and cover the number two over the top. So like if it does get thrown in the seam, you're there in position to make a play. Uh, these types of plays were all over the film. It just happened like every time I saw it that uh, they threw it to their side. So he definitely has some good... Uh, recognition processing of route concepts when he's in zone coverage. Here we got Fuller isolated on the backside of a three by one. So he's got the one on one matchup. And I love how he just changes things up from pre to post snap and love that quick. Like he's got really good short area, like twitch quickness. I wouldn't say it's like the greatest long speed, but as you can see, like how he's doing this pre snap, kind of, you know, cheating back, looking like he might open up zone turn. And he's basically isolated. Like they're playing, you know, variations of quarters, but he's basically man to man on this guy. Uh, off man and then he gets square right at the snap and then starts weaving to the inside he starts slowly changing to the inside anticipating this end breaker and then once he sees it he's in a good position look how he's square and then boom breaks on it so fast and then gets down uh knocks it in complete and this is a, like you know late end of the game jets are trying to get in position to kick a game winning field goal like couple plays left and he just closes instantly makes a nice play on the ball he's got good ball skills and uh these types of plays make <laughs> Uh, are very, very, very exciting to watch. I feel like this is something the Dolphins need, and getting him for that contract was uh, definitely surprising. I feel like this is a pretty impressive play for Fuller versus Miami, actually, which he did give up uh, a touchdown in this game, technically, to Tyreek Hill on that long bomb, but it was more of like he was expecting safety help and like the ball placement. I mean, I'm not putting a, too much on it when you have to cover uh, Tyreek Hill. Ends up making the tackler, but this can be... Uh, very, very impressive. I think, you know, film study, under, understanding what Miami likes to do. But this is a tough situation because there's a lot of times where Tyke will end up breaking this to the outside. But just understanding, you know, being in quarters, he's zone turning, seeing just how Tyreek's running his route, he starts to anticipate that he's going to work on the dig like this. And he squeezes it a lot. And like, how many times have we seen this where Waddle runs the clear out or whoever it is, pulling the safeties with it. And then they try to fit this in. And usually the problem are the linebackers getting too much depth what the linebackers do but the corner usually isn't in the hip pocket of Tyreek in that situation usually it's at least kind of open you just have to get it over those the second level but he squeezes it pretty nice and then comes off of it and then goes over and uh makes the tackle on a chan out in space he's a pretty decent tackler actually from what i've seen uh wouldn't say he's like the most aggressive um guy ever but he's not a, gonna shy away from contact at least and he'll at least make most of the tackles that i've seen him be in situation to make tackles Third and eight situation, Falcons are an empty, Fuller down here at the bottom, they're motioning this across, so he's now on the three by two side, they rotate their coverage into like a Tampa two, and he's in a cover two uh, scenario, so he is the flat corner at the bottom, and I just love how he plays this, you know, he's always trying to bait with his looks, he's always in a football position, he's zone turning, he opens up his hips now to gain a little bit of depth, just in case, you know, this guy works into the corner, he can leverage that and take that away. 
once he sees that wide receiver sit, he wants to, you know, squeeze it to get close enough to take this away because this guy's past the sticks and he's in between both defenders. But now once he sees the quarterback look to throw it to Bijan down the flat, he gets downhill, transitions pretty smoothly. He has really nice downhill transitions. And now he just squares him up, breaks down to tackle Bijan out in space. Really good stuff. Hold that to, you know, a four yard gain on third and eight, which ends up, you know, now getting it into a fourth down situation. Good stuff. As his own corner, he's very, very impressive. Now look at Fuller, just vision on the QB. Like they're basically playing man to man here and he's just got his eyes on the QB and he just reads it the whole way. Um, Basically, he's in shotgun. I believe that's Ritter. And Ritter just boom, one step and is ready to throw the ball. It's third and 11 and he sees that and he understands exactly what's coming. Like he's already breaking on the slant way before this guy is even turned. Like this guy's still square and Fuller's already broke on the inside just based on what the QB is doing. So reading the QB's drop depth, his eyes and everything he's already broken on it that is just great football intelligence put yourself in a situation and then almost get the interception those types of plays are whew, chef's kiss you know love that stuff from a cornerback that they can make those plays without even looking at a receiver then he gets this interception later in this game last play we'll look at in atlanta uh then we'll get to the bills absolutely beautiful just understanding the situation it's third and seven they're an empty but they're bunched up here and usually when they're bunched up like this uh, and you're taking like the first outside guy, like the guy that goes the longest to the outside. He usually ends up running like an outbreaker near the sticks. They're trying to out leverage you. So he gets out and look at him. He takes a few steps back. And then once he's he's already in football position to break, just reading the QB, vision on the QB. This QB guy hasn't even been close to break. He just sees the quick drop again, ready to break. The guy's getting in his throwing motion. Boom. Great, um, great angle to the ball. Everything gets this interception. That type of stuff is absolutely beautiful from Kendall Fuller. Then turns into a runner, at least, you know, pick up extra yards. But anticipation, reading QB's drops, and they're basically just playing like a variation of cover three match, but he's reading through the bunch to the QB, understands situation, and makes an absolutely wonderful play. He's just an incredible football player. And I believe Fuller is 29 right now, so you sent him to a two-year deal. You know, they're on the, like, sort of, you know, tail end of their career but you still when you sign someone at 29 they can still definitely be productive in their 29 30 31 year range and then they start to really fall off after that but yeah definitely a fan of this move in the you know the short term for sure uh definitely helps out and they, i think they could still end up taking a cornerback another one in the you know free agency or even the draft uh this what they've done with their free agency is really given them a lot of flexibility to go to go best player available i really like watching fuller play like in zone coverages but where he gets to match and they're basically playing quarters down the field and how many times have you seen where like the dolphins are playing zone and it's like quarters and their guy bails out too much this is third and eight by the way and then the number one just you know leaks in behind on a deep dig and they're just wide open especially gabe davis specifically against the bills but he just squeezes it easily uh start to anticipate the break uh reading the language of uh, the body language of the receiver just very very easy boom transition you're in the hip pocket that's never getting targeted Love seeing that type of stuff. Uh, Josh Allen kind of forces a throw that could have been picked off. But yeah, just great job by Kendall Fuller. Last play that we're right down here for Kendall Fuller versus the Bills. He gets an interception on Josh Allen. So, you know, got to end it on that. This is a third and 20 situation. Just understanding, you know, this basically turns into an arm punt. Like, uh, but yeah, get the pick. See that, you know, he's isolated on Gabe Davis here. They're trying to hit him with a double move. Doesn't really get too affected by it. Just stays patient, stays square. Get back over the top. Open up your hips. Uh, now when you're in this position, he's playing high upfield shoulder position like this. You want to turn into the receiver and play back through it like that. And he does sees the ball still going to get thrown deep. It's not thrown to the back shoulder. So he, uh, just stays over the top, plays top down and then times it up perfectly. Gets that ball in like right here. If he was in a position where he was on like this side of the receiver, but still in the hip pocket, you would have turned to play, uh, towards the QB away from the receiver to play the ball. But when you're in this position, you want to turn into the receiver just in case because usually when you're in this position they try to throw more back shoulder but it still gets thrown over the top and he still makes an excellent play to get that interception so i'm a huge fan of this signing let me know what you guys think down below and leave a like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in